We've got a real treat for you today on Tips from the Top. My name is Rick Barron, and I'm here today with a very special guest. Today, we have Louis Langre, the music director for the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. Maestro, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. Your role on stage is very visible, but I'm sure it's only a fraction of what you really do. Can you help our audience understand what the rest of the music director's role is? Oh, yes. The on stage in a concert is actually like the visible part of the iceberg. And, uh, but before this concert, we have several rehearsals. And before the re rehearsals, we have weeks, months, years, depends on the difficulty of the piece of studying this piece. I mean, when I say yours, not only this piece, of course, but um, some pieces I study since I am 15 or so, almost 40 years ago. And uh, that's for the music part, uh, but a music director also gives a direction of sound, style, identity, artistic identity of the orchestra and is part of the scheduling of the choosing the pieces, which piece is good to perform in that program paired with which one, with which soloist. Uh, why? Because it must be fantastic pieces for the audiences, but it needs to be also great pieces for going deeper in an artistic relationship between the music director and the musicians. And also, there are, uh, a conductor cannot conduct every piece wonderfully well. So I know that there are some pieces that it will be better for me to ask an amazing colleague specialized in this piece or this genre of music because he will bring so much to the musicians and he will do it better than me. So I should ask him to do it or her. Okay. In terms of starting your career, my research indicated that you didn't have any formal education, academic education in conducting. Yet, here you are, standing in front of an orchestra doing exceptionally well. Was there, was there a mentor that helped you get here? How, there must be a story there. Please. Yes, of course there, there is a mentor. But, you know, you can play, study an instrument, let's say piano. You can play amazingly well the 32 sonatas, Beethoven sonatas, by memory, without having given one concert you practice at home. For a conductor, it's totally um, impossible because you, otherwise you would be a clown, you know, <laughs> making beautiful gesture and you put a great orchestra <laughs> with a great conductor and it sounds wonderful, yes, but you're not a conductor, you're not conducting anyone. Mm -hmm. So it's only by doing that you learn. And uh, I was born in Alsace, which is part northeast of France right on the German border. It's over the Rhine, mm -hmm. like the famous district in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Germany, they have so many opera houses. And most of the time, conductors learn by being vocal coach, pianist, then assistant. And then there is automatically a conductor who suddenly is ill. So you have to go. And you do the best you can. But I met uh, several, I mean, actually two really very important conductors in my life, totally different. So there was no way to imitate them. One was Sir, now he's Sir, Sir John Elliot Gardiner, and the other Semyon Bichkov. And uh, I remember uh, Semyon Bichkov being in the rehearsals behind me and uh, you know you make some gesture so you do that and then he said well next time instead of doing it inside 
try outside. And yes, it worked. Mm -hmm. So what is so di difficult and specific with conductors is you have to found you have to find your own body language with your culture, character, uh, morphology also. And it needs to be clear for the musicians. But a pianist, I mean, you have a pianist can sit higher or lower, have the wrist high or low. It's basically almost the same with conductors. Go on YouTube, look Leonard Bernstein, Sir George Solti, George Sell, Herbert von Karajan. It's not at all the same language, and yet they are clear for the musicians. Maybe not for the audience, but I think today probably people watch too much conductor in the audience instead of, of listening to the conductor. Mm. And uh, the, the gesture needs to be clear for the musicians. So it, what it sounds to me like is you had opportunities available to you. You took advantage of those opportunities when they presented themselves. And you had the flexibility to take advantage of different opportunities. Absolutely, absolutely. And Semyon Bichkov, I remember, told me, Watch, because if you're a conductor, you won't be able to live without conducting. Doesn't mean that you will be a good conductor, you can be a bad conductor, but you need, you need, it's part of my life. Quite often people ask me, so you are a musician, what is your hobby? But it's not like another profession. It's not that I love music, it's just part of my life. And uh, yes, it's a question of, Taking the chance that you, it's hard to provoke it, but then you have to take it. Mm -hmm. And it's also will and be ready. The more ready you are, the best you will fit. And then there, there is just pure chance, like coming here to Cincinnati, I was invited as a guest conductor and immediately, on the first minute, I felt, wow. I had the feeling that we, we were speaking the same musical language, despite my bad English. But musically, I felt at home. And uh, probably they felt it too, because then I was asked to be music director. But this is not something that you can plan. You, you cannot plan, okay, I want to be the next music director of the orchestra. It's not, there is no career strategy. The only thing is to do what you do on the moment with the deepest clarity, honesty, energy, and sharing it with the musicians, with the audience, with Music is not only notes, it's this vibration. And, and uh, I, f I feel it here. What you do is you've confirmed what I've heard is the definition of luck. And the definition of luck that I like is when opportunity meets preparation. And that's exactly what you described is preparation to make sure that when those opportunities presented themselves, people would say, wow, Louis, look how lucky he is, right? He just stepped right into that one. But it was truly about preparation. You've had, you've had a chance to conduct everything from philharmonics to chamber orchestras, operas to festivals, very f flexible and versatile. What role does flexibility and versatility play in leadership? Oh, it needs to be on a perfect balance. Flexibility is great if you're rigorous. If you're only rigorous, it can be rigid. If you're only flexible, it can be not stable enough. What is important and also as a musician is the balance. When you have all the elements, 
in balance. If, if you're too rigorous, you might, or if you're rigid, people won't be able to give their, their best. You need to trust them. You need, to, you need them to feel that you need them. And they need you too. So you're, you're part of the boat and you're captain in the same time. But a captain alone uh, can only, can, can, cannot do anything. I need them. They know it. And not only I need, the, I, I need the best of them. And I need to create the conditions of musical dialogue between them. It, I don't want, it's not about my interpretation. We have to be, all of us, very humble in front of a score. And it's what Beethoven wants. It's not what I want from Beethoven. Other, otherwise, I would compose myself. So I would say it's the same with them. If they have a very clear perception of where I want to go, then I must leave them some freedom and flexibility to express themselves, especially in music, I mean, because it's art. It's not sport, so there is no, not, a, Two is not better than one, or uh, there is no mathematic logic to that. It's about vibration, it's about sensitivity and sensibility together. It's about letting our secret garden blossom. And it, that in a very specific uh, organization in an orchestra everybody has a specific role what I heard was it's about sharing the destination with them giving them some guidance but allowing them to take their own journey absolutely Is that true? it's absolutely that otherwise they would be passive Otherwise, you just like an IKEA, you know, mm -hmm. say, I want that like that, and you will do that because I want it, because you're paid to please me. I mean, this is not music. If that were true, you could do it all digitally, right? Absolutely. You wouldn't need, music. You wouldn't need the music. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and life, art, is just the opposite of that. But it doesn't mean that you have, when I say freedom, that everybody can do the best they want. It, everybody has to give the, the, the best, their best, in this very clear direction mm -hmm. or interpretation. Mm -hmm. But they have, must be active in it, active part of it. And I would say even the audience must be active. You know, like sometimes when you, you read a book and uh, you know that this book is going to be uh, a film with a your best actor and quite often you're disappointed because it's not what you imagined in music it's the same it's all it's notes there is no words so it's even more so you must l not only let allow but encourage everybody to open their soul their heart their talent and this is so specific, I would say, to, to this orchestra is, and to any great organization, I believe, that the addition of each talent is something. But when the addition, when the, the, the level of the orchestra is even more than the addition of this talent, then it makes just the most glorious and joyful way of sharing music together. If you just joined us, I'm here on Tips from the Top with Louis Langre, the music director for the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. Maestro, oftentimes the difference between good organizations and great organizations, or good performances and great performances, is the rapport that exists between the team. Do you have any techniques that you use to help 
elevate your team from good to great? Well, if there would be a technique, it would be so easy. You know, tell me how to do and uh, you, okay. I'm, no, it's not about that. It's just giving the best you can, all your energy, all your... Being music director of an orchestra is much more than conducting good concerts. That's why I moved with all my family in Cincinnati. Because you have to understand the city, you have to understand the community, you have to understand their needs, you have to understand their problems, their wounds. And an orchestra must be part of the healing also, part of the solutions. Uh, because, because we need art, any. So often now, people con some people consider that art is a plus or a supplement of soul. It's totally wrong. It is essential. And if you, if you have some doubt, just come. Come to a concert. Come, um, the doors are open. And it must be a transforming experience. You know, sometimes you, you read a book or you, go, you, you see a theater piece or you go to a concert and you are transformed. That's why we are here. And it's not then a plus, it's just a different life. Moving to Cincinnati sounds like an opportunity to get closer to your team, get closer to your customers, and to really get immersed in the, I'll call it the culture of Cincinnati. Were there things that, that um, Cincinnati leadership did, maybe the orchestra leadership or the Cincinnati leadership, that made it easier for you to relocate your family from Paris to Cincinnati? Well, with my wife, we wanted it to be also a family project. So it's not that my family is following me uh, behind me. Mm -hmm. We are all going to have a, to open a new chapter in our life. And uh, it's so funny, so many people asking me or asking us, so how is it to leave Paris to, and come to Cincinnati? And we say, it's great. And say, yes, that's a very diplomatic answer, but tell, <laughs> tell us the truth. It is great. You don't, I mean, I'm not sure everybody realize the First, the beauty of the city, I mean, over the Rhine, mm -hmm. is amazing. It's a beautiful place, not only to visit, but to live. And you have great schools. I mean, I know that because of my children. You have amazing museum. And you, you have also, yes, this quality of life. Of course, in Paris, you, you, have, you can go to cinema, theater, and concert every day. But you have no time for that because life is so hectic. Here you can cherish, enjoy really deeply uh, so many things, so many different things. And the level is, I mean, the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra is one of the best orchestras in the country, in the continent, in, on, in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, just an amazing history. I mean, Rachmaninoff came here, uh, Bela Bartok came here, Stravinsky came here, etc., etc. But it's not only, I mean, a laundry list of the past. It's a place of experimentation also. When we did Luminosity, you know, these open air concerts that we do uh, in August in Washington Park with this projection, uh, amazing visual elements. We, w we are the first to do that. First in the world with a live orchestra. It's challenging, but so exciting. Doing one city, one symphony, focusing on one piece of music for a week in all the city, 
it is challenging for all of us, but it's so rewarding just to see, to, I mean, getting letters from audience members, sharing then their enthusiasm and telling you that a piece that they heard so often suddenly sounded, shined differently. That's wonderful. That's why, that's why a live experience is priceless. It has a cost, but it is priceless. And you don't have that with a, with a recording, with a CD, even if it's important to make recordings, because we want to show to the whole planet. I mean, and, and, uh, every music lover should be able to purchase a CD or stream or, or go online. And that's very important to have a world-wide image. The, the experimentation and the flexibility keeps the knife sharp by forcing it to rub against more steel, right? Absolutely. If, I mean, if you, if you keep doing what you, what you know and, I mean, doing the same kind of concerts and why? I mean, we should be always inventing, trying different things. Some will work, some not. But it's so important to try, to imagine. And uh, in the history of music, the size of the orchestra or just the programs have changed so much. So we are here, and that's what, one of the reasons why I came here, because we have the possibility here to invent the future, to invent mm. the life of an orchestra in the 21st century. So we have a lot to look forward to. Absolutely. Through the rest of your tenure, through 2020. I saw recently that you were quoted as saying that you're French with some German DNA. Well, I'm Alsatian. I come from Alsace, mm -hmm. which is a region of France which changed nationality a lot of time. So, you know, in Germany, sacred art is music, definitely. No question about that. In France, can be painting, literature, sculpture. Uh, so, music is essential for me since I'm young. I don't remember not being able to read music. It's my mother language. Uh, and Cincinnati is, in a way, a German city because mm -hmm. the, the development of the city came with this German immigration. Music is essential. And actually, Music Hall is just in the middle of this over the Rhine district. Normally, in the middle of, of the city, what do you have? You have a cathedral, or you have a city hall, or you have Palace of Justice. Here you have the Temple of Music, which is that art is part of the city, is on the foundation of the city. This is a wonderful symbol because it's a wonderful reality. When we did uh, Luminosity, the first year, in three days or three nights, we had 45,000 people coming. Wow. So it is because they love their orchestra. It is because they are proud of their orchestra, even for people who don't go regularly to concert. You know, in France, we have many cities, we, or places where people are very fond and proud of their soccer team, even if they never go to matches, to, to, to uh, games. And here I can feel that, that there is something anchored in the city, which is so rare. So my role as a music director 
is to make it evolve, but from what it is. I'm not here to change everything. I'm first here because I admire so much. I love so much this institution and the people who work with me and we work together. That together we will make it evolve because because we want to bring ourselves. But it's not about me imposing something. It's me giving a direction and everybody has take responsibility of that mm -hmm. and give their best. And then it is a collective adventure. It's not, I don't need a, my statue. I need to serve the best way I can this wonderful Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. You conduct an orchestra that has, at times, almost a hundred musicians, all world-class, very talented, as you described before. How do you provide recognition and rewards to people of that kind of caliber? Well, first, it's not only me. It's, you know, when you, you conduct, you're there in a concert, and somebody is having a very challenging, difficult solo, which means that he or she will be alone to play, not alone, but all the rest, all the 100 people will play not only with him or with her, but for her. Mm. And then there is this, what we call a solo. So people playing th this major exposed piece, just before that, you can feel, it's hard to describe, but that everybody's sending the good vibes. And after, you can feel, wow, that was so great. And at the end of the concert, you know, I will ask this person to stand up alone. And all the 3,417 people who will be in this at Music Hall, this wonderful hall, will applaud with me, with the colleagues, this person. But I would say the m biggest reward is to feel the quality of attention, of silence, of good vibes surrounding these the, on stage and in the hall. It's hard to describe, and in the other, other way, I'm sure that if somebody who has been to one of our concerts know exactly what I'm meaning. So if somebody watching has not come, do come. It's such a wonderful experience, deep experience, because in the same time, you go to a concert for two hours, you will forget completely your daily life, you know, the problems. And in the same time, you will reconnect with your own sensibility, sensitivity, and it is a transforming experience. Not only transforming, but sounds like it's a very spiritual experience as well. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today on Tips from the Top with our guest, Louis Langray, the music director for the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra.